Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, Lucian Furlanech is my name. Um, I'd like to thank the Brazilian Society of Pediatric Neurosurgery and organizing committee of this symposium for invitation and opportunity. Uh, I'm very happy to talk about shunt technology today. I have nothing to disclose related to this topic. Uh, I'm going to go uh, through uh, historical aspects of shunt, uh, shunt valves, uh, working mechanisms, uh, most uh, commonly used uh, scientific evidence in favor or not uh, of uh, specific types of shunts, uh, and uh, a few words about adjuvant technologies uh, coming out. So uh, if we look uh, at the history of uh, CSF drainage, uh, it goes actually back uh, to more than 1,000 years ago, where people uh, were uh, already trying to uh, use external drainage uh, to manage um, medical and neurological conditions. So the next step uh, was uh, a bit later um, with attempts uh, to uh, divert CSF within the intrathecal space, either uh, using uh, open techniques or uh, endoscopically, uh, or uh, already uh, using some sort of uh, rubber uh, catheters. Uh, uh, almost in parallel to that, uh, some authors uh, were uh, trying to uh, adapt. And, uh, you know, as we can see here, um, uh, the, in this drawing from uh, Irving Peer in, in Greifswald in Germany, um, where uh, he uh, was uh, uh, using um, prepared blood vessels to communicate the ventricles to the supersagittal sinus. Uh, and other uh, people uh, already uh, diverted CSF uh, uh, to the peritoneal uh, cavity, uh, pleural cavity, uh, and uh, to other places. And then uh, we uh, came to the first uh, generation of uh, shunt valves, uh, with the first one implanted in 1949 by Nelson Spitz in uh, Philadelphia, um, uh, where they, they were already uh, using uh, similar systems uh, uh, as we, we can uh, still find nowadays in some chunks. Interestingly enough, uh, the second generation of uh, chunk devices, uh, uh, you can see here already in the 50s, um, we had uh, different types of adjustable uh, chunk valves. Um, in the uh, beginning of the 70s, uh, uh, we had already um, siphon uh, mechanisms uh, and uh, gravitational systems uh, in an attempt to avoid uh, or to overcome uh, over drainage uh, and siphoning. So looking back, the, the, this feels like uh, more history uh, in some reports in the literature, uh, like this one from the 60s. Um, so uh, this author reported um, mortality rates uh, related to uh, the management of hydrocephalus uh, of around uh, 70%. And we know that uh, nowadays this is uh, definitely less than, than 1%. So um, this year's, we definitely had uh, an improvement uh, uh, regarding uh, outcome. So uh, what happens uh, if you if you hold, uh, go to the literature and, and searching for you know uh, the different uh, shunt devices available in the market? Uh, we we're going to definitely to, to find more than uh, 200, 300 uh, different uh, designs and. Um, uh, functionality and uh, different const constructions uh, uh, from different manufacturers. Uh, and the cost range uh, from a couple of dollars to uh, more than 4,000. So uh, regarding uh, shunt types and working mechanisms, uh, if we would um, summarize them. So uh, here you have a slip uh, valve mechanism, ball and cone, uh, the um, main membrane and siphon device, gravitational. Uh, in, in one, on one slide, we would have um, them organized uh, in a way that, uh, you know, you have uh, di a differential pressure shunts, uh, and among them is lit valves, diaphragm, bowling cone, bowling spring. Um, uh, you have um, flow regulated uh, devices and siphon uh, um, shunts, uh, gravity actuated. You know, the gravitational units um, and um, adjustable devices. 
uh, minimum requirements uh, for a shunt is actually uh, you know to, to have a catheter because in the case of uh, ventricular uh, subgaleal shunt you, you don't really need the valve most of, most of the times but, uh, but um, the idea is to, to keep the intracranial pre pressure uh, within physiological ranges in, in all positions uh, avoid uh, reflux uh, and uh, to have long durability so in terms of uh, physiology, uh, we know that CSF is produced uh, within the uh, ventricles uh, by the choroid plexus. Uh, it goes all around uh, and uh, gets up absorbed by the arachnoid villi uh, on the convexity. Uh, in case of a uh, uh, shunt uh, in, then uh, what we create is a uh, uh, low resistance uh, pathway for, for CSF. Um, let's say uh, you have a medium pressure um, shunt in, uh, in this, uh, this child. Uh, it works uh, from seven to uh, 11 centimeters of water uh, of open pressure. Uh, so the, the final driving pressure, considering the um, uh, hydrostatic uh, uh, pressure, would be in a supine position, three centimeters of water, in upright position, nine centimeter, centimeters of water. In the case of an adult, uh, since uh, hydrostatic tactic uh, pressure is a, uh, is much higher uh, you would end up uh, with almost 30 centimeters of water uh, with this patient in upright position this means that uh, depending on the uh, inner diameter of your uh, shunt catheter uh, this patient could have from uh, you know almost 40 uh, mils hour to more than 500 mils hour uh, of uh, shunt rate meaning that uh, this higher flow rates in sitting and standing positions uh, leads to, to siphoning and over drainage. But how common is over drainage uh, in, in daily practice? Um, Becker reported in 68, for the first time the use of this term, uh, in literature you, you find uh, from 10% to 30% reported. Uh, but uh, this interesting paper from uh, Professor Rick in uh, 2004, uh, looking uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, symptoms and uh, um, you know, radiological evidence of uh, over drainage uh, actively, uh, they found uh, up to 85% um, uh, over drainage rate uh, radiologically, uh, but uh, um, 15 to 20% of these patients were symptomatic. Uh, then comes um, a type of device uh, into play. Uh, what happens is that uh, when you have this uh, type of device in, uh, and the patient goes from a lying position from uh, to a, an upright position, then um, the, uh, the uh, hydrostatic uh, pressure itself would, uh, you know, push uh, CSF down. Uh, and together with it, uh, this uh, loose and uh, thin membrane. Uh, uh, against the inner uh, surface of the shunt device, closing uh, the pas uh, passage uh, to, to CSF. Um, what happens is that uh, a drawback of these systems uh, when they, they uh, came around was that, uh, you know, uh, surrounding tissues uh, or, uh, you know, um, pressure from uh, from outside would be enough to uh, inadvertently uh, close uh, the system causing uh, sort of malfunction. Um, you have uh, um, modern um, uh, siphon device in the market nowadays uh, that, you know, uh, avoid this kind of complication. Um, gravitational units are uh, quite interesting devices. What happens is that you usually have a uh, differential pressure uh, unit uh, and um, uh, gravitational here, uh, which consists of, uh, you know, it uh, could be a uh, ruby ball and uh, um, metal balls. Uh, so uh, in the lying position, CSF would have to um, uh, overcome uh, uh, this uh, differential uh, pressure, uh, but could freely uh, flow uh, uh, in, in this part of the device. Um, in the standing position, uh, CSF pressure would have to uh, overcome both the GP and the uh, gravitation, gravitational um, parts of the, uh, the, the device. Um, for this, uh, so these this kinds of uh, systems, uh, they, they are available both for uh, long peritoneal um, uh, shunting, 
and also for uh, ventricular shunting. Um, an important uh, advice when using uh, gravitational units is that uh, this device they, they, uh, should be um, placed um, uh, along the, the long axis of the, of the body. Otherwise, uh, the gravitational unit would not uh, work properly when the patient uh, moves from um, lying to upright position. Uh, flow regulated uh, uh, shunt. So, uh, an example is our Orb Sigma valve. So, uh, this, this shunt works in uh, three different, uh, different stages. Uh, basically, uh, it limits um, CSF flow uh, to up to 18 mils an hour in this first stage. If pressure, uh, CSF pressure goes uh, higher, uh, it would limit uh, to 30 mils an hour, and then you have a safety uh, stage. Uh, which allows uh, CSF to uh, freely uh, flow with a low, lower resistance uh, in case uh, of uh, much higher uh, CSF pressure. Uh, interestingly, uh, you can see uh, some reports in literature um, that uh, for these kinds of, uh, these types of shunt, uh, over drainage is, is uh, you know, the rate of over, over drainage is, is much lower. But on the other hand, you have more blockage in uh, under drainage just because the initial um, working pressure is, is higher than usually. Adjustable valves are interesting devices uh, because uh, they're basically uh, differential pressure uh, device with a um, uh, peculiarity, uh, which is uh, this you know sort of uh, ramp, uh, which uh, can be um, uh, adjusted. Uh, by the assistant physician in a way that uh, you could increase or decrease um, the working force uh, within this uh, spring ball system, for instance, um, allowing uh, CSF to uh, pass uh, uh, in an easier manner or, or with more difficulty. Uh, you have several types of uh, adjustable devices in the market. So what shunt is best? Uh, what does the literature say about that? Um, if you look at uh, some very interesting, important papers, um, I just picked up some of them. Uh, this uh, publication from 2008 uh, from Stein collaborators, uh, they kind of pulled uh, together more than uh, 30,000 patients uh, operated on uh, along decades. Uh, and they found out, found out that, uh, you know, uh, at least among children, um, there was no difference uh, in shunt failure rate at one year follow-up. Um, uh, to the same conclusion came uh, uh, the authors of uh, the task force, uh, which uh, organized, uh, uh, you know, guidelines uh, based in, in evidence in the in the literature. Um, so, uh, as a conclusion, uh, they found out that no uh, specific shunt was better than other. And also adjustable valves, they were not uh, superior to non-adjustable valves in the pediatric population. However, if you look uh, carefully uh, some other uh, publications uh, like this one from 2017 from the Paris group comparing um, the Orb Sigma valve to a standard GP valve, they did find out that um, you know, Orb Sigma uh, had a better uh, overall survival and uh, less over drainage uh, uh, than uh, uh, its counterpart. Um, and uh, 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 also interesting uh, was this uh, review from the uh, German group from, from Berlin, uh, looking at uh, uh, you know uh, the impact of gravitational uh, shunt valves uh, in, in over drainage. It, and they found out that uh, one year survival of these uh, shunt devices uh, is quite high in uh, over drainage rate quite interesting interesting low and i could not leave without uh, mentioning the basics uh, rct published uh, last year by our, uh, our uh, british colleagues uh, where they came to the conclusion that uh, antibiotic impregnated shunt catheters uh, led to a much lower shunt infection rate in the long term uh, which was also cost saving so uh, a few words about uh, adjuvant technologies coming out. So on the left here, we have uh, the um, uh, so-called shuntoscope, which is a one millimeter thick, uh, high resolution uh, endoscope, uh, which can be passed through the proximal uh, uh, shunt catheter, uh, meaning that the um, uh, surgeon could be able to 
um, place the proximal catheter uh, away from choroid plexus and uh, vent ventricle walls under direct vision. Uh, on the right here, we have uh, a type of um, a shunt sensor or uh, sensor reservoir, uh, which can be uh, used with any shunt uh, or uh, shunt valves, but uh, it is usually used uh, in uh, conjunction uh, with um, uh, adjustable valves, uh, meaning that uh, the attending physician could be able to read uh, intracranial ICP uh, or intracranial pressure in uh, CSF flow uh, telemetrically in a uh, outpatient environment, uh, which can be uh, sometimes quite useful uh, in this uh, very difficult to manage uh, uh, case such as uh, IIA patients. So uh, coming to the conclusion, uh, the desirable uh, shunt should be uh, affordable, effective in all uh, body positions, resistant to external forces, uh, insensitive to increased protein or you know cell uh, debris, uh, should have the ability to control flow in an automated manner, and definitely be uh, durable. And coming to the final conclusions, uh, what we still have uh, nowadays in the real world is that uh, you know shunts in general. Um, they, they do overdrain uh, in adjustable valves. They, they are not solutioned uh, to siphoning over drainage. Uh, if you want to manage the sort of condition, uh, you have to uh, go for a siphon device or gravitational units, uh, or even uh, flow regulated shunts could also be used in selective conditions. Uh, last but not least, I would like to reinforce the role of you know teaching and training uh, the younger uh, generation of uh, neurosurgical residents. Uh, shunt surgery uh, should not be underestimated and regarded as a simple procedure. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, thank you once again, and I would be happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much.